Howdy students, I've got another volume example here for you all. So today we're asked to evaluate the volume of the region formed by y equals negative x plus 2 and y equals the square root of x. And so one of the first things I want to identify is how to approach this problem. Um, if we look, we could assume by my drawing that we're probably going to use the washer method or the disk method rather, sorry which would be f of x squared dx squared. And intuitively, you would be more or less correct. But let's think about the region that we're evaluating here. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to draw two horizontal lines. We see before this point, make that a little smaller, before this point here, if I draw a horizontal line, I would hit negative x plus 2, and then square root of x. And then to the right of that point, I would hit square root of x, and then negative x plus 2. So this time, because we have two functions involved here, we're actually going to use the wash washer method, which would be out squared minus in squared dx. In this case, I gave it to y'all. We're rotating about the x-axis. Okay, so let's think about this for a second. What's really going on here is we are taking the volume to the left of this point. We're taking the volume formed so I'm not going to use, actually, I'll just go ahead and erase this, clean this up so we can see that. What we're going to do is I'm taking the volume formed by this curve here. Oops, clean that up a little bit. Sorry, just had my coffee, it's just kicking in. And subtract this volume up until we get to this point here. And then I'm going to take the volume formed by, I'll use pink, this region and subtract this region. Very similar to some of our areas between curves, at our intersection points, we're going to have two integrals. So what this is really going to be is I'm going to have pi the integral, then let's call this a, b, and c from a to b of the outer radius, which in this case, like I said, we hit negative x plus 2 and then square root of x. So I'm going to put negative x plus 2 squared minus square root x squared dx plus pi integral from b to c of square root x squared minus negative x plus 2 squared. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is we need to find our balance of integration. Given the graph, we can go ahead and assume a equals 0. But what is b and c? So let's solve b and c really quick. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take, do this in red, square root of x equals 2 minus x. I'm going to square both sides. Sorry, giving me x equals 2 minus x squared. I'm going to FOIL this expression out, which will give me 4 minus 4x plus x squared equals x. I'm going to move this to the other side, giving me 0 equals 4 minus 5x 
plus x squared. And we see we can factor this out to get x minus 4 and x minus 1 equals 0. So we see the zeros for this polynomial are x equals 4 and x equals 1. But remember, we squared this expression to isolate our x so that we could factor properly. So I'm going to square root both of these terms. So we see that the intersection points of this are really square root of 1, square root of 4, gives me 1 and 2. So, sorry, b equals 1 and c equals 2. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and substitute in our bounds of integration, and I'm going to save myself a little bit of writing here. Give me one second. Boop. Boop. Copy. Paste. Boom. And then erase, erase, erase. Gives me one. Gives me one. And gives me two. All right, so the last thing we need to do is evaluate this integral. So first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take this expression and I'm going to FOIL it similar to this. So then I get, and I'm going to actually do this in two lines. This is going to be rather long. Pi. I'm going to put a bracket so that we can kind of isolate things. Integral from 0 to 1 of... Four, sorry, I didn't have this memorized. Minus 4x plus x squared minus square root x squared is x dx All right, and then the next half we're gonna have plus pi integral from 1 to 2. Again, square root x squared is x minus, and then foiling this expression out again, 4 minus 4x four plus x squared dx all right, so I took a second to clean this up. I'll go ahead and explain what I did. All right, so we've got a negative x, and then we've got a 4x term here, all within our parentheses. So I combine like terms, and we get this expression here. And then I did the same thing here, except this time I distribute my negative sign across to all my terms. And then combine like terms again, giving me this expression. And the last thing to do is just evaluate this integral. So starting with the left side, we get 4x minus 5x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 on the bounds from 0 to 1 plus, and then again we get negative 4x plus 5x squared over 2 minus x cubed over 3 on the bounds from 1 to 2. Perfect. All right. Plugging in our bounds, we get pi. I'm going to do the, I'm going to do this hand first, this side first. So again, pi, get 4, 1, minus 5, 1 squared over 2, plus 1 cubed over 3, minus
minus and substituting in zero to all of these expressions, we get zero plus, and then doing the same thing over here, I'm gonna write it underneath just in case it doesn't fit, negative four, two, plus five, two squared over two, minus two square cubed over three. Sorry about that. So I can move this over. Okay, so again, all I did was substitute in uh, two for x into this expression, and now I'm gonna substitute in one. I've got negative four, one, oops, one plus five, one squared over two minus one cubed over three. And then bracket, oops. Bra oh, man. Make sure you guys drink water before you have your cup of coffee, guys. There we go. All right. So I'm going to do this in red. This gives us 4 minus 5 over 2 plus 1 over 3. So then I get pi 4 minus 5 over 2 plus 1 over 3. This gives me negative 8. 2 squared is 4 times 20, or sorry, times 5 is 20. Over 2, this is 10. Okay, minus 2 cubed is 8. Over 3 gives me 8. Over 3, minus 8 plus 10. Minus 8 over 3. Okay. Sending this negative in or this minus into everything. This becomes plus, this becomes minus, this becomes plus. Ne uh, and then four times one is four minus one squared is one times five. So we get five over two. Clean that up. Plus one over three. So then we get plus 4 minus 5 over 2 plus 1 over 3. All right. And so what I want to do is I'm going to find a common denominator between everything. And uh, because we're dealing with both 2 and 3, I'm just going to let our common factor be 6. All right. So I'm going to multiply this expression by 6. Oops, I'll do that in red. Multiplying this expression by 6 gives me 24 over 6. Multiplying this expression by 3, I get minus 15 over 6. Plus, multiplying this by 2, I get 2 over 6. Minus, multiplying 8 by 6, I get 48 over 6. 6 plus 10 times 6 is 60 over 6. We have another 8. Oh, never mind. I'm going to multiply this expression by 2, giving me 16 over 6. All right. And then we have another 4, so we get plus 24 over 6. Multiplying this expression again by 3, I get minus 15 over 6. And then the last one we have is one third here, which gives me plus two over six. I'm gonna rewrite all of that here. So then we get, and uh, what I'm gonna do is now that we're dealing with all common denominators, I'm just gonna write all of these as a numerator expression over six. So I get pi 24 minus 15 plus two minus 48 plus 60 
minus 16 plus 24 minus 15 plus 2 over 6. All right. And then to make this addition a little bit easier on ourselves, I'm going to combine similar integers. So I get 24, 24, pi, 48, minus 15, plus 15, minus 30, plus 2 and 2 gives me 4. And then now we just have all the expressions we can't combine. So we've got minus 48 plus 60 minus 16 over 6. And the wonderful thing about addition and subtraction is now that order doesn't matter as long as you keep track of your signs. Uh, but for the sake of simplicity, I'll do this straight across, uh, left to right. So 48 minus 30 gives me 18. Plus 4 minus 48 gives me negative 44. So then it becomes a minus 44. And then 60 minus 16 is 54 minus 10, 44. Uh, so what I did there, little mental math, uh, I have a zero, right? And I have a six, so I'm gonna subtract six from 60, gives me 54, and then subtract 10. So we remember this is the bigger number, so this becomes plus. Sorry, excuse me. All right, almost done here. We get pi. 18 minus 44 plus 44 over 6. Cool. So what we can see, boom, boom, these two are gone. Gives me pi. 18 over 6. And I'm going to divide by 6 to reduce this fraction. Gives me 3 pi.